Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss how the Tories' national service policy, which they're still running with, is not only attracting ridicule for themselves, but maybe is helping Labour make another appeal to young voters. Now, I'll be talking about young voters specifically at various points over the course of the next few weeks. So I don't want to preempt what I've already planned to do future videos on. But shall we just say that young people are one of the Tories' oldest punching bags going back 200 years? They used to get away with it because young people didn't vote back then, you know, when almost nobody was allowed to vote. But since we've had a sort of more universal voting rights uh, system, the Conservatives have still used young people as a punching bag and in instead gotten away with it because of their relatively low voting numbers. To this end, the Tories often encourage anything designed to create voter apathy amongst the young because, you know, they like them to be disengaged from the political process. Every single, oh, Labour and Conservatives are all basically the same, always comes from the Conservatives. Conversely, however, anything which makes young people more likely to vote, that's very bad for the Conservatives. And Sunak has just given Labour another way to appeal to more young people to vote. There's a really good Twitter account which monitors the social media advertising habits of the main parties and they've pulled up some interesting Labour ads targeted specifically at 18 to 24 year olds. Now note, despite putting the vote for your future in a red box in this advert, the advert is not actually urging people to vote Labour, a bit of subliminal messaging there, but it's not urging people to vote Labour, just to register, just register to vote. Of course, with over half of this age group expected to vote Labour, it's entirely in Labour's interest to push the notion of voting without even having to say, you know, who people should vote for. And if young people, particularly at that lower end of the age group, if they were to see the Tories' latest plans, they may well be more inclined to vote because The Telegraph published an article, it's behind a paywall, I'm afraid, so they'll never see it, but published an article which covered some of the details of Sunak's latest mad proposal. So there weren't many details that came out of this national service idea, right, um, on Sunday, but this article goes through a view exceptions. First of all, uh, sorry, details. First of all, there will be very, very few exemptions. The Conservatives have even said even the royal family won't be exempt. So exemptions, almost nil. And they were, they were specific about who would not be exempt. If you have a job, you're not exempt. So that's right. Even if you have a job which requires you to work weekends, you will have to not attend work in order to do this new form of unpaid work or slave labour, as it's more commonly known. You're at university, you still have to do this slave labour. Oh, you're having a gap year abroad. Oh, well, you'll obviously be exempt. You're not in the country. No, you will still have to come back to the UK every couple of weeks to complete your slave labour. The only exemption even hinted at is if you're already serving in the military, you might be exempt. Even then, it's not clear, it's you might be exempt, no promises. So in theory, you could actually be forced to leave your regiment every few weeks to do your slave labour like the rest. So although the emphasis in the labour advert is on those encouraged to enlist for military service, which the Conservatives, remember, are explicitly saying we want these conscri conscripted troops to fight Russia, the two weekends a month of slave labour are what's going to affect most 18-year-olds once the scheme is implemented. And the same message could essentially be made about the choice between voting and being made to do slave labour, even if it costs you your job, your studies or your travel plans. You know, this national service policy, it's designed to appeal to older voters, as almost everything the Tories do is. But judging by the lack of enthusiasm from the right wing, and even Tory MPs, doesn't sound like it's going to do that. Because after all, if Tory candidates don't think it's a good idea, they're hardly going to be pushing the message locally in their own campaigns. And, and so as much as I doubt this policy is doing the Tories much good, if any, it might at least help encourage more young voters to turn up. Get registered. Link is in the description below. Check that you've got the right voter ID to vote in person. Another link in the description below. If you don't, you can either get it or the least, the, the lowest hassle option, register for postal voting. Then remember that despite their personal views, so because there will be some Conservative candidates, I've just said there, who think this is a mad idea. It doesn't matter. 
they are going to promise, because they have to, they're going to promise to make all 18 year olds choose between forced into the military or forced into slave labor. No exemptions for already having a job. No exemptions for being at university. No exemptions for being out of the country. Might not even be an exemption for already being in the military. And fines for your parents with potential imprisonment in some cases for non-compliance. So if you want to make sure your local Tory candidate loses for this, or any of their other insane policies, then you need to make sure you use the stoptheTories.vote website when it's time to cast your vote. Once it's up and running, you will just need to enter the postcode. You won't need to submit any personal details at all. There are already a lot of people intending to vote tactically. We want to make it as many people as possible. But, and this is the message I want to repeat. I'm, I'm going to repeat it a lot, I'm afraid. So please forgive me. It's not just about me urging you to register and vote. Can I urge you to do, to urge others to do the same? Because if you're watching this, you're probably interested enough in politics to intend to vote anyway. But what about other people you know? The more people we encourage to vote, the better, regardless of how they vote. Although voting against the Tories is best. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.